Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship. On this program, we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we will examine verses 2 and 3 more closely, considering the spiritual warfare that we are involved with and the implications of this unseen war, while also exposing the satanic infiltration of the church through the Pentecostal and Charismatic movements. We now join our study in progress of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 2 and 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 2, uh, Paul says, But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think that of us as if we walked according to the flesh. What Paul's saying is that he doesn't want to have to um, deal with them in a direct and confrontational manner, the way he's had to deal with others, because there were people already in the first few years of the church of Jesus Christ, there were people who were standing up and contradicting the apostle and, and their teaching, the apostolic teaching. Already they were causing and casting doubt on the letters that were being written by the apostles and passed through the churches. Now if they were doing that then, imagine what it's like now. And uh, notice that the accusation is basically that they're more spiritual than Paul. That Paul is walking according to the flesh. And he faced this criticism and the, and there were personal attacks of those who pretended to be super spiritual and what we could call ancient Gnostics and Charismatics. Today in the church there are those who are the, you know, the very spiritual people and they're the faith healer types and the the people are hearing the voices and telling you what God wants for you and all that. And uh, they will try to convince those who listen to them that those of us who do not practice or teach those things, that our problem is we're just not spiritual. The truth of the matter is, it's the exact opposite. Those men are pretending to be spiritual, but it's all flesh. Every bit of it. And if you... Pay attention to this and other places where Paul was attacked personally. They sound very similar to today's signs and wonders crowd. And how they uh, refer to us. But also, notice the division. Look at the charismatic and Pentecostal churches and you'll notice that they divide like nobody else. There are m more Pentecostal charismatic denominations than there are other denominations. When a Baptist church splits, it's a Baptist church down the street that opens up. Yeah. Hey, there's human beings, there's things going to happen. But when the Pentecostals split, they always believe that they are building the kingdom, they are super spiritual giants, so they start a whole new denomination. I mean, they come up with some wild, you know, the Holy Fire Baptized Pentecostal Church of Jesus Christ in America Incorporated, you know. <laughs> I'm not kidding either. I didn't make that up. <laughs> That's what they do. It, Mike and I have laughed for years about how, you know, the true fire baptized Pentecostal Church of America. And, you know, they just add the word true to the front of it. <laughs> Paul says in verse 3, read that with me. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we don't war after the flesh. And we have to be careful not to try to paint what we're doing as spirit when it really isn't the flesh. And uh, today, and where you live, this is real. This is for you this morning, very real and important. There are going to be constant efforts to suck you in. Yeah, amen. And this is all part of a preparation for the Antichrist. We said that the Antichrist and the false prophet will come with all signs and lying wonders. I like to put it this way, we are in the flesh, but not of the flesh. You, know, you are human. You have a body. Your brain is even flesh. You know that? It's your mind that isn't flesh, but your brain's flesh. God uses your body. God uses your brain. God uses your tongue. God uses your hands. Plays out in the flesh, but the battle is being fought in the spirit. Um, I always think of this. I just want you to give you an idea of this spiritual battle going on. 
There's an account of David battling the Philistines that gives us what I believe is a graphic picture of this unseen war. 1 Chronicles chapter 14. Now in uh, 1 Chronicles 14, uh, beginning verse 13, says, And the Philistines yet again spread themselves abroad in the valley. So uh, David's feeling surrounded. And it says, Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them. Turn away from them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. So he's kind of telling David to uh, rearrange the troops here and get against the mulberry trees. And uh, verse 15 it says, And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees. Be like a whoosh, you know, sound of going, meaning there's movement. That then thou shalt go out to battle. For God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Verse 16 and 17. David therefore did as God commanded him, and they smote the host of the Philistines from Gibeon even to Gezer. And the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought the fear of him upon all nations. Don't miss that. It played out in the flesh. But... All that you see listed and described here took place because of what was going on in the unseen. An unseen world. Unseen to you and I because we're still in the flesh. But we had better not lose track of the fact that there's this unseen battle going on. And that should drive you to your knees to pray. Knowing that there's this whole battle going on. As you read this uh, account with David, you ask the question, what was that in the trees? <laughs> the sound of going. What, what, what was that? Well, there's another account. There's the account of the king of Syria's attempt to arrest Elisha. And it gives us a strong indication of what we were actually seeing with David. If you want to turn to 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 15. It says, uh, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? So here is the king of Syria has come and surrounded the area where Elisha is to have him arrested. Uh, the context is that every time the king of Syria made a move, Elisha would send someone to tip off the king and say, uh, this is what they're doing. And So one of the king of Syria's advisors said, it's that thinking Elisha. He, he's practically just, he knows what you're saying when you're laying in your own bed. So the king of Syria says, let's go get him. And they surround Elisha. And verse 16, and uh, Elisha answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, don't, don't, get, don't pick on this guy now. With his eyeballs, he can count. <laughs> They're outnumbered. So what's Elisha talking about? Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And all of a sudden, the man in the flesh was able to see the spirit world. And he said, ooh, we got him now. <laughs> Wasn't any worry after that. Game over. Game over. <laughs> so that to me is a bit of a graphic illustration of what is going on in your life. There is an unseen battle going on. If you're not praying, and if you're, especially if you're just functioning in the flesh and not aware that this is going on, you're number one, you're robbing yourself of some very important intelligence. Uh, wars are won and lost on intelligence. You study any war, you'll find out the, the winner of the war was the one who won the intelligence war. We got a hold of Hitler's little secret typewriter type thing and was able to decipher his messages. Just so that little typewriter thing was like Elisha. We knew what Hitler was thinking when he was sitting in bed. Because <laughs> as soon as he sent the message out, we got a hold of it, put it through this little thing, and we knew exactly what Hitler was about to do. Intelligence wins the war. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. 
So we have to keep ourselves in the Word and aware of there's this spirit world going on. We don't, we're not seeing everything with our fleshly eyeballs. I'm blind in one eye and barely see out the other anyway. So I'm, I'm glad that that's not all, you know, there's this whole spirit war going on. And, and it, this is kind of the theme he, he, Paul mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Read that with me. For we walk by faith, not by sight. You see, that's the modus operandi. Throw in a little Latin there. <clears throat> uh, for, the <laughs> for the Christian life. But we walk by faith, not by sight. That doesn't mean you don't look. But what you look at, you'd better judge it by Scripture and by the faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. Jesus said, these words that I speak, they are spirit, they are life. It's the Word of God which is spirit. Those aren't just, all right, I could take John's book out, his Bible right there, I could burn it. And I'm not going to riot and kill anybody like those Muslims when you burn a Koran. Because we understand that it's not the paper or the ink. But the words on that page are alive. Amen. And those words are spirit. And so if you're going to understand what's going on in your life, you have to judge everything by the Word. That's why you need to be in the Word every day. Every day. If you're able to read anything, make sure it's the Word of God. I've been sick a couple of days in my life where I couldn't read anything. I mean, I'd start to read and I'd just get nauseous. I had to lay back down. That was the only excuse I've ever had in my life for not reading the Bible. And if I had audio CD, I would have put it on. But I, we got to go here. And I got to deal with this. Because I, I believe we've settled this as far as you recognizing what's going on in the Spirit and the Word of God being your guide. But we are not to attempt to see or to experience the unseen warfare through metaphysical practices. You had better get this. This is being taught in churches, in Christian books. They're teaching Christians to go into the occult. And they're trying to legitimize it by giving it Christianese, using Christian terms. Now, in Deuteronomy 18, we're told about these metaphysical practices. And in verses 10 and 11... Uh, the children of Israel are given these instructions. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Now, of course, we say, well, who would do that? Well, just say abortion. They use a saline solution that burns the baby to death. So don't say that's not going to happen in our day. It's already happening. But he goes on and says, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. In the New Testament, uh, it's very clear what God is going to do with folks who are given over to those practices. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, which would be the whole uh, free love, homosexual, sodomite, and all that, and sorcerers, which is any of the above that we just read in De Deuteronomy 18. And idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell is a temporary place, and at the end of the millennial kingdom, hell itself will be brought up and cast into a lake of fire. And all those in hell will be brought up before a great white throne. And if their name is not found in the Lamb's book of life, they're cast into a lake of fire. And there is fire, and there is brimstone. If you can't believe the Word of God, you've got problems. That's what it says. And who's going there? If you're a sorcerer and you repent and believe the gospel and are saved, you won't go there. But if you're unrepentant and you stay in your sin of sorcery or as a whoremonger or a idolater or whatever, then you go to hell and then you go to the lake of fire. That's just that simple. Folks, the majority of Christians today are involved in these practices. You may not believe me, but it's true. If you look at the charismatic and Pentecostal history itself, this modern signs and wonders movement, um, the leaders you see today, they all date back to the 1906 Azusa Street Mission in LA, California. This was a little cult. It was filled with sexual immor immorality and occult practices. The very basis of the modern Pentecostal charismatic movement comes from a place 
where they were involved in sexual religious practices in their little church. And they were also involved in occult practices right in the services. The Azusa Street Mission was under the leadership of a, uh, he was a black man named William Seymour, but he was a disciple of a guy named Charles Fox Parham, who was located in Topeka, Kansas. But we have five eyewitnesses to what happened at Azusa in 1906. G. Campbell Morgan, R.A. Torrey, H.A. Ironside, W.B. Godby, and Clarence Larkin, who are trustworthy Bible teachers. And what did they say about this movement? Now, if you, if you have an affinity for this charismatic movement, you better strap on the seatbelt. G. Campbell Morgan called it the last vomit of Satan. Now, when he said that, that was very prophetic because all we've had from this Pentecostal charismatic movement is division, heresy, lies, distortion, crime, sexual immorality, scandal. And so G. Campbell Morgan was right on. Uh, R.A. Torrey said something very shocking. He said that the Pentecostal charismatic movement is emphatically not of God and founded by a sodomite. What? What he means is he's referring to Charles Parham, whose school produced William Seymour, who went out to Azusa. Parham was a complete heretic. He denied the eternal punishment in hell. He was arrested in 1907 for sodomy in San Antonio, Texas. He preached anti-Semitic British Israelism that white people are the true Jews. He was a member of the KKK and he was a member of Freemasonry. That's who mentored William Seymour, who founded the Azusa Street Mission. That explains why H.A. Ironside said, quote, disgusting delusions and insanities, pandemoniums where exhibitions worthy of a madhouse or a collection of howling dervishes were causing a heavy toll of lunacy and infidelity. In other words, it was driving people to the point of being insane, but it was also driving people into terrible sexual practices right in the church building and during services. I won't go into some of the detailed accounts, but men and women would fall all over each other in very compromising, immoral positions during the services, just to put it nicely. And then it would continue behind closed doors in orgies. And you have been sold a bill of goods when you've been told that the whole charismatic Pentecostal movement is just a bunch of Christians who believe a little different from you, it's a different spirit. Amen. You find very few people into that satanic nonsense who ever come out of it and serve God. And the only ones who ever do serve God are the, one, the, the ones that come out of it. And uh, one more, uh, well a couple more. This W.B. Godby, he was a holiness preacher. I mean he was kind of a but a lot of the people in the holiness movement were attracted to this because they were more emotional in their services and things. And this W.B. Godby called the, uh, these preachers Satan's preachers. Called them jugglers, necromancers, enchanters, magicians, and all sorts of mendicants because they refused to work. They were bums. He claimed it was a movement begun by spiritualists. They were occultists. It was a movement back then of what they call spiritualism. And Clarence Larkin sums it up very well. He says, from what has been said, we see that we are living in perilous times and that all about us are seducing spirits and that they will become more active, more active as the dispensation draws to its close and that we must exert the greatest care lest we be led astray. Now, I know very few people who aren't getting caught up in one facet or another of this fake spirit movement. I know very few people these days that aren't caught up in it. And I'll say it right now, I know there's a lot of people who would never come to our fellowship because I will not go along with it. And I won't endorse it. I won't pretend it's not what it is. And you're going to face that more and more as we go on. We're in perilous times. More and more people are going to try to make you feel like you're a radical and you're, you know, too out on the fringe. The problem is, is up until about a hundred years ago, every 
church was like what you're in now. Even the Methodists and other churches, they believed the Bible and they used the King James Version and they preached the truth and they didn't have any of this stuff going on. And now you are being made to feel like you are on the fringe. You've got to get this stuff straight in your mind. And you have to see things spiritually, not just what you see with your, your eyeballs. Because, as Paul said in verse 3, read that with me. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. They see all this stuff going on, they pretend it's spiritual, but it's not, it's flesh. And they think you're unspiritual because you won't go along with it. But here's some of the things you find in this counterfeit spirit, and folks, I'm telling you, this is going on in churches, and it largely starts in youth groups and colleges and seminaries. They go for the young. And once they get the young, the young get older. Finished. Channeling, tarot cards, seances, Ouija boards, transcendental meditation and visualization. Every spiritual Roman Catholic and Orthodox along with every spiritual charismatic and every spiritual person involved with the emergent church is involved in that. It's a satanic practice. Automatic writing. When a spirit takes control of you and causes you to automatic write, that's Satan or a devil. God doesn't work that way. Psychics, horoscopes, and fortune telling. That's what you get in most Pentecostal churches today. I have a word from the Lord, and they'll start to tell you your fortune. Sid Roth, Sid Roth that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, if you ever listen to him, he's on uh, 91.5, the same radio station we're on, and he's dangerous. That guy goes, Sid Roth is his name. He's a Jew who claims to be a Christian, but he's bringing all this occult visualization and techniques and practices and he, uh, you know, apparitions and all this stuff. Then you have psychics and horoscopes. Now, just go on Facebook and look at a lot of your Christian friends and relatives. They read the horoscopes. And they'll say, oh, I don't really take it seriously, and yet you'll see them actually alter their day based on what they saw in their horoscope. Yoga, imaging, centering, chanting. Yoga is being sold as... I'm just stretching. Although I'm saying words, I don't have any idea what I'm saying, and I'm emptying my mind. And, but I'm just stretching and calling it yoga. You've already been suckered. And you've already got one step in the wrong direction. And trust me, I've seen it, and I'm seeing it in family and friends. Once they go to the yoga, it's just a matter of time before they take on other things. Holy laughter, convulsions, and barking. Your dog should bark. Christians should not. <laughs> then you have mind-altering substances, of course. And that goes into both over-the-counter um, drugs being used, as well as pharmaceutical drugs, as well as, uh, you know, marijuana or what. You don't know how many people I've met in churches who smoke pot and think that they get their visions from God after they do that. It's happening. All that stuff is going on today, and it's called spiritual warfare. They really believe that they are tapping into these things. The biblical Christian, the Bible believer, will be able to discern between when they talk about the power or the unity of the universe and all that. It's a replacement of the Heavenly Father. Sometimes it's the Mother God, Gaia, or whatever. They replace God. Glenn Beck is fond of saying they're the same thing. Glenn Beck's a liar. Glenn Beck's a Mormon, and he's going to lead you to hell if you buy his lie about uh, religion. Ascended Masters, that's to replace Jesus Christ. He is our Master. You have spirit guides to replace the Holy Spirit. You have the Ouija board and tarot cards to replace your Bible. You have holy laughter to replace joy in the Spirit. You have yoga, TM, and chanting to replace biblical meditation, which is when you take a passage of Scripture and think upon it and allow God's Spirit to show you what He has for you. That's biblical meditation. That's not what's being practiced in yoga, TM, and chanting. You have drugs and drunkenness to replace the Spirit-filled life when the Bible clearly says, Be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. You have psychics replacing Bible prophecy. 
You'll find a lot of these people like to talk about Bible prophecy as long as you don't talk about the fact that Jesus Christ is going to come and wipe out the Antichrist system and if you're not born again, you're going into the lake of fire. They don't like to hear that part. But they'll then equate the Apostle John and Paul and Isaiah and Jeremiah to Nostradamus and all these, you know, uh, Edgar Cayce you know, and Gene Dixon and all those people. They lump them all together. Well, Bible prophecy is the only prophecy that you and I should be looking to when it comes to the future. Amen. Channeling replaces Bible study. Visualization replaces prayer. And so the discerning Christian will recognize those things. But even this is the pastor of the largest church in the world, Evangelical Church. It's in South Korea. His name is Paul Yonghee Cho. His books and tapes sell by the millions here in America. And he is, uh, uh, quote, is saying, if Buddhists and yoga, yoga practitioners can accomplish their objectives through fourth dimensional powers, then Christians should be able to accomplish much more by using the same means. Most of your Catholic priests, Orthodox priests, uh, teachers in those churches, most of your emergent church pastors, uh, you want to know why Rob Bell puts out a piece of garbage called Love Wins? and gets all those book sales when he's denying Jesus Christ and denying that Jesus is the only way to heaven and denying eternal hell because so many people are under the wrong spirit and they don't recognize the truth and they don't recognize a lie when they see it. And that's what is important about this spiritual warfare. So in closing, I want us to turn to 1 Thessalonians 4 and see what Paul has said to us here that applies as you learn the truth and you apply it by comparing it with Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 4 and 5, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You see? Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. You see, there's a darkness taking over the world. And we are to be children of light. Now, the bad thing is, is there's fewer and fewer children of light. But the good thing is, the darker the darkness, the brighter the light. It's getting darker and darker and darker, but if you will let your light shine before men, it will get brighter and brighter and brighter. Verses 6 and 7, I want you to read that with me. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So we shouldn't be like others. And Paul is just being general here. He's not saying the unsaved. He's just saying, look around you. Even among Christians, they're sleeping. In Ephesians, he tries to say, wake up, church. You're asleep. Let us not be like that. Not so we can have a spiritual superiority complex. You know, we don't want to think, I'm uh, one of the children of light. You know, the Bible Believers Fellowship of Children of Light Church of America Incorporated. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that it's not to build up pride; it's to build up appreciation. God has placed you in such a wonderful point in time to be a Christian. Be sure to visit our website at kjvbiblebelievers.com, where you can find a wealth of MP3 audio message downloads along with additional videos, articles, and links. This message is brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. I am Greg Miller. Thank you for listening.